Good afternoon. My name is Wendy Moeller. Some of you may fam be familiar with me because I'm one of the consultants working with the city on Plan Hamilton. But today I'm actually happy to be here as a member of the a American Planning Association's Board of Directors to present the City of Hamilton with this APA Great Place Award. Um, it is truly an honor to bring re a national recognition to the leader among com of Ohio communities who have, through thoughtful and deliberate planning, created a central living room space that promotes cohesion, resiliency, and economic opportunity. Great Places in America is the American Planning Association's flagship program that, cel uh, excuse me, that celebrates places of exemplary character, quality, and design. Great Places are selected annually and represent a gold standard of community involvement, cultural and historic interests, sense of place, and most importantly, a legacy of exceptional planning. Since 2007, APA has designated 290 neighborhoods, streets, and public spaces across all 50 states, including places like Millennium Park in Chicago and Central Park in New York City. On this, the 11th anniversary of Great Places in America, 15 designees were selected across America out of three categories, great neighborhoods, great streets, and great public spaces like Markham Park. APA receives nominations from all kinds of sources, including APA members, planners, and the public. Nominations go through a rigorous uh, selection through a committee of APA leader leaders to determine the designees. APA does not use a checklist. We don't have the must have this to be a great place. Rather, we look at the characteristics like interwoven equity, architecture, community programming, environmental practices, while considering factors such as geography, demographics, and context. This year, APA reviews submissions from more than 20 states. Of these submissions, River's Edge at Markham Park stood out as a clear example of planning that is helping to create a stronger and more vibrant community. At the core of every well-planned public space is strong community engagement and collaboration. Out of a collaborative effort led by city leaders, local business owners, involved residents and planners came the concept to transform a brownfield site into the heart in the heart of downtown into a space where community members of all backgrounds could come together. Over time, partnerships with and support from the Markham family, City of Hamilton, Hamilton Community Foundation, Hamilton Parks Conservancy, and others led to the, this premier park and community center that we all know and value today. But the success of River's Edge at Markham Park is found not only in its remediation story, which is truly remarkable in and of itself, but also in its revitalization story. In the year following the opening of the park, the, the park has spurred over $15 million of investment through the project you see right behind us here at Markham Park Apartments, which has 102 apartments and five retail spaces. Nestled within the park is River's Edge Amphitheater, which again is right behind us all here, which brings together tens of thousands of people and visitors for regular program concerts and events each year, spurring additional investment in downtown Hamilton. Markham, Markham Park also serves as an important connector from nearby neighborhoods to the downtown and river for pedestrians, bicyclists, and families. In fact, the park connects to 80, 80 miles of paved recreational trails, all of which are ADA accessible. There is so much to celebrate about this crown jewel. For this reason, and additional planning efforts currently underway, the American Planning Association officially designates River's Edge at Markham Park as a 2018 Great Public Space in America. Congratulations, Hamilton. Now I am pleased to welcome Brandon Sarber, who is the Director of Strategy and Information for the City of Hamilton. Thank you, everyone. So I was asked to give a rundown on the process and a little of the history that got us to this beautiful park and now nationally renowned uh, public space in which we find ourselves today. So we'll start with an empty patch of grass on the river. A little more than a decade ago, with glimpses of progress in the form of developments on High Street, city leaders began to recruit development prospects to this site. And they came pretty close. But as we know, the Great Recession hit and the bottom dropped out. The proposed development at that time was primarily residential and included not only what we see across Dayton Street currently, 
but also residential on the ground uh, behind me. In this respect, I really have to give Joshua Smith a lot of credit uh, for his vision and conviction that downtown Hamilton really can't be its best self without a premier public space in this location. So River's Edge was largely designed and on its way in 2011. I see some city folks who are um, really critical to that effort who are here today, not the least of which former Vice Mayor Weil is here. Uh, Allison Haskins, Rich Engel, John Creech, if I'm missing you, yell at me. But um, these folks were really instrumental in getting River's Edge underway in 2011 and under construction in 2012. But in the depth of the recession, it was really important to city council and city administration to not spend general fund dollars on this amphitheater. So a, a patchwork of grant funds were assembled from the likes of, uh, thanks to the state of Ohio, ODOT, ODNR, uh, our guardian angel, Hamilton Community Foundation, amongst others. So River's Edge is under construction here in 2012. Concurrent to that, the summer concert series begins its first year. There were many who doubted the success of the summer concert series in its planning stages. I was in some of those meetings uh, and I can tell you those folks didn't know Adam Helms very well. I see you, Adam. Uh, Adam and the River's Edge team, including Steve Maxwell and Clint Cole, who I know is here today, uh, and some of your board, I think as well, uh, and many, many volunteers have profoundly, this cannot be understated, have profoundly influenced to the positive the perception of the city of Hamilton. So thank you all very much for that work. Their commitment to quality entertainment and notably to lesser known national, regional, local up and coming artists who play original music really make it pound for pound the best free concert series in the region in my estimation. Entertainment at River's Edge Amphitheater has steadily grown from that first year and to sit in that lawn right behind us here with the sun setting on a local upstart or a chart topping Grammy winner is, is really a sight to behold. So upon the completion of River's Edge Amphitheater, the city began the master planning process for the remaining acreage of the former Mercy Hospital site. Those conversations started with the support of MKSK. I saw Cleet Bank in here. Uh, I think some other folks from MKSK, the park designers, and stakeholders from surrounding neighborhoods and institutions. During this process, decisions were made about the desired form and general programming uh, of the park. The conceptual design reflected input from stakeholders and incorporated elements from the most architecturally significant element that does surround the park, that being the rosette window at St. Julie's behind me here. We all learned a new word. This is not a word I learned from Steve Timmer, although there are a few of those. <laughs> I learned the name of a new shape, quatrefoil, but I'm from Lindenwald, so I just call it a clover. You see the uh, clover shape in the rosette window is reflected in the precast benches that surround uh, the fountain here is a really neat sort of design touch. And as well, if you imagine that shape as sort of the convergence of four circles, the overlapping space between uh, two circles leave you with this slender leaf-like structure that you see in the smaller precast benches around the fountain and also in the um, planing beds surrounding the fountain. So the concept design was presented at an open house at the Courtyard by Marriott Hotel and also in a presentation to city council and the response was overwhelmingly positive. So at this point we have a wonderful plan with no dedicated funding source. And things could have perhaps slowly been accomplished over maybe decades, but being here less than two years after the opening of this park, I can tell you uh, we would not be any close to where we are today were it not for the generosity of the Markham family. Working through the pre-construction phase with the Markhams, uh, refining the scope of the project was really exciting. The Markham family, led by Steve, Trudy, and Nikki, all standing right here, uh, were so engaged in the process and brought so many elements to the finished product, three of which I think are very notable. First, the runnel feature over here. It was not a part of the initial plan. There was always slated to be a uh, child's playscape there, but Nikki brought this idea to the table, and I think it's really, uh, it's really been one of the most popular elements of the park, especially with kids. So in the final plans, it was referred to as the Little River, but it's always the, the Nikki River to me. <laughs> Second, um, the sculpture and the primary water feature. A strong vertical element was always planned for that space, but Steve Markham knew the initial proposal wasn't correct. After putting out a call to sculptors, 
Steve still wasn't satisfied. Then one day he showed up to one of our meetings and on the back of an agenda sketched out what you see there today, which is, is really phenomenal. So thank you, Steve, for that. And finally, when, uh, one day talking about the trees in the park, Trudy revealed that the ginkgo tree is the Markham family's favorite tree. So this led to the prominent placement of a ginkgo tree there at the corner of Dayton and uh, North 2nd, as well as the small metal ginkgo leaves that you see on the uh, entry signs. So construction on the park saw a few bumps. These were all expertly, and I assure you, calmly managed by our esteemed parks director, Mr. Steve Timmer. <laughs> Having Steve Timmer throughout the construction process and the pre-construction process with his expertise, his passion, and his work ethic was a blessing. And I know brought a lot of comfort to the Markham family uh, as it was being built. They trusted Steve and Steve did not want to let them down. Our presence here today hopefully proves he did not let them down. So I have a timeline here. I'm not going to read it to you, but I think it's really, really interesting that every year since 2010, 2011, there's been significant steps that have led to the development of this public space. And uh, I think it really shows a great coordinated community effort to get here. So in closing, I do want to revisit and drive home big thank yous for this park. Adam Helm, Steve Maxwell, Clint Cole, and crew for making Thursdays the best night of the week in summers. In Hamilton, thank you. Round of applause, come on guys. Thank you to Steve Timmer and the entire Hamilton Parks Conservancy team for their tireless efforts on behalf of our beautiful park system. I think we can all agree Hamilton Parks are looking great and the city is very excited about the continued improvements. Thank you, Steve and team. Thanks to Lauren and Ty Smallwood, Aaron Hufford, and the rest of the Hamilton Flea crew for what they've done to activate this park. I got a few more, bear with me. Thanks to MKSK, Turner Construction, and all the subcontractors who built this park. We should thank John Gadouli from the Hamilton Community Foundation for approaching the Markham family about this project. Thank you, John. I want to thank Joshua Smith and City Council for being the visionary and courageous leaders you are. Thank you. And finally, thank you to the Markham family for making this game-changing investment into the quality of life for Hamiltonians now and for generations to come. <laughs> Congressman Davidson, the floor is yours. Uh, thanks, it's a great honor to be able to be here and congratulate Hamilton and frankly all the people that we just thanked uh, for the work that, that came into this uh, great recognition. And so thanks for, for those who gave the recognition uh, for the work that's been done here. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a great proverb that says, without a vision, people perish. And it's neat when you see a place like this come together because it all starts with a vision, uh, but it doesn't turn into this if it ends with a vision. It, it takes a lot of work to see that uh, to its end. And it's always great when you can come and appreciate that. And I think, uh, to me, it's one of the things I enjoy most wherever I'm at. You, you, you stand there and look at you know, what, you're, what you're admiring, whether it's a, a work of art, uh, a finished project, uh, recently a bill that passed, <laughs> uh, and, and think about all the work that went into getting it done. And sometimes uh, it, it's been you know, a decade or so in the making. You guys beat that timeline, which isn't easy with all the obstacles that come together, uh, but it's an honor to be here and celebrate. I remember just a, a short time ago, it seems, uh, although for those of you that were doing the work, it probably doesn't feel like it was that short uh, on a beautiful sunny day when we did the groundbreaking. So it's nice to be able to have been here uh, for that and to be here at the close. But just want to say thanks and congratulations. It's an honor to be able to re represent this great city as uh, our member of Congress. And uh, I look forward to doing everything we can to see the progress continue. On Monday, I'm going to tour uh, Spooky Nook and, and uh, look and see how the policies that have gone into, we had to fight to keep the historic tax credits. We had to fight to keep the new market tax credits. And uh, we did succeed in creating an opportunity zone. And so we're working on that. all these things that are coming together uh, to be able to help that development and others and see uh, cities like Hamilton revitalize and just see the, the area flourish 
and uh, perhaps be better than it ever has been. So uh, thanks a lot. And I uh, understand that Mayor Moeller also has a few remarks. So thank you all. God bless. You know, after hearing Wendy and uh, Brandon and the congressman speak, I should probably just sit down and shut up. But there's a few things I do want to say. First off, thank you, American Planning Association, for this recognition. When River's Edge Amphitheater at Markham Park and Markham Park were created, uh, a flag was put down here stating that Hamilton is alive and well and values quality of life. And uh, to me, having one of the top five great public spaces in America means that we have top five quality partners who are behind this project. It means we have top five city administration in America, and I believe we have that. It means we have a top five parks program, and of course, we've got to thank Steve Timmer for that, because every blade of grass is perfect here right now because of Steve. I believe we have top five, more than top five, I think we're tops in all those categories when it comes to partnerships, when it comes to city administration, and when it comes to our parks program. Uh, a few special people I want to recognize. One is former Vice Mayor Rob Weil, who's, who's a driving force behind the quality of the River's Edge Amphitheater. Of course, the City Council and, and Councilmember Kathy Klink is here representing Council today. Um, of course, you know, Brand Sarber and, and all the folks in the city who are here. And uh, without you, this, this would not be what it is today. Not too long ago, there was a big mound of dirt behind us. And I mentioned something about Markham Park being economic development. And it is economic development. It's economic development with a smile. There's a smile attached to this place. You see smiles at the concert series, thanks to Adam Helms and his crew. You see smiles at the Hamilton Flea. You see smiles at festivals. And when there's nothing going on here, nothing planned going on here, you see smiles of people who just are soaking up this great green space. And behind me, just before I started speaking, there's a guy juggling back there. So I thought that was kind of cool myself. But it did take character, it took quality, and it took great planning to create this park. Um, Markham Park has obviously created a domino effect around this downtown area. Obviously, uh, the Markham Apartments and the other new construction that we have going on around here. Thank you, Hamilton Community Foundation, Ohio Department of Transportation, City of Hamilton, obviously, and all of our other partners, just too many to be named at this time. But let me specially thank the Markham family who have always loved this city, cared for this city. Whether it be job creation or park creation, the Markham family has been here for all of us. And that's Steve, Nikki, Trudy, of course, Joe, Sarah. We would not be here today without the Markham family. And Steve Markham's representing the Markham family. And I'm gonna ask Steve to come on up here and say a few words. I first met Steve about 45 years ago at Hamilton's Adams Elementary School. And uh, we were in the same class. Uh, same classroom, and he sat ahead of me, and if I would have just copied off of his homework, who knows where I'd be here today, uh, where I'd be now or what, but but Steve, uh, thank you for representing the family. Please come up here and say a few words, because again, without the Markham family, we would not be here today. Steve Markham. Good afternoon, everybody. Beautiful day for a presentation. Um, well, I was going to do what everybody else did, which goes through a list of thank yous, and I think it's been said. So, you're welcome. <laughs> thank you. And actually, we have more thank yous. That's exactly what we're doing right now. Um, so there are so many people that have made this um, place special, but there are five organ um, organizations and families that have really um, made this the place that it is. And so we wanted to recognize each one of them um, individually for their 
um, for their impact on this um, place. So the first, I'd like to have the city of Hamilton and like the mayor to come up. But I also was thinking if anybody uh, who's uh, worked or an elected, anyone who's been an elected official or worked for the city, either past or present, if you could come up and be recognized as well. <laughs> Rich, get up here. Rich, Preach, get up here. <laughs> Rob Weil, you're not even trying to hide. <laughs> and I was going to say, you know, some words about everybody, but I, again, I think it's been said. Um, just hope that everybody who worked on this um, is proud of what it is today, and I think that the award is recognition that it hopefully is. Um, so thank you very much. And, Okay, perfect. <laughs> Could we have Adam Helms and everyone that's involved with the River's Edge concert series come up, please? Thank you very much. And can we have the Markham family come up, please? No. Come on up, Markham family. We know who you are, so. <laughs> Thank you guys. <laughs> and can we have um, John Gadouli and everyone involved with the Hamilton Community Foundation please come up? I know there are more, I, I know there are board members here. No, not coming up? <laughs> come on, Craig. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come on, please. I mean, you have done so much for this community, so. Come on, Heather. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. And finally, um, Steve Timmer and everyone involved with the park, Hamilton Parks Conservancy. <laughs> Thanks so much. I promise I had really nice things to say about all of you, but they were already said, so. Um, so, you know, without further ado, we just wanted, we wanna wrap up and invite everyone to um, come to um, our, our reception. We wanted to thank a few people before we did that and um, let you know a couple things. So we wanted to thank the River's Edge group for the equipment and also the beer at the reception. Um, <laughs> And uh, thank you very much to the Fitton Center for the podium, of course. Um, thank you to the Parks Conservancy for hosting this, but especially for this beautiful um, display that we walked up to. Uh, we are not this fancy, and they made us look really good when we came up here and had all of this here. So, um, and then also wanted to thank the Markham Apartments for hosting the um, reception. Um, the, because the elevator isn't working, the reception is gonna be held um, in the model apartment where we'll have most of the refreshments, but we also can go up to the rooftop, but you have to walk up the stairs. So there will be um, refreshments up there, but um, you know, for those that can't um, walk the stairs, um, most everything will be in the model apartment, but there will be rooms available to check out on the fourth floor as well. So you can see the different models that they have. Um, 
And if you can get up to the rooftop, I really hope that you're able to because it's really beautiful. Um, there's water in the fridge and we purposely had this during Operation Pumpkin so that you all can enjoy Operation Pumpkin tonight. So we hope that you go and check out downtown Hamilton at its most alive and beautiful after the reception. Thank you very much for being here.